be good, man. All right, all right. All right, man. So what's up, Paul? How you doing, man? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. We'll wait to see if a couple people come in, man. And uh, what you been up to today, man? What you been up to? I know uh, what you've you know, been up to. Working, oh, man. working um, singing some songs, you know, uh, shopping. Same old yeah. stuff, man. It's getting hot outside. Yeah, it is, man. I was uh, I was outside like uh, I don't know this past past weekend. I was working outside doing some stuff, man. And I almost feel like you know, the older you get, the harder it is on you, man. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, you, you're you're building something out back, are you? Like, uh... yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to move my studio um, to the back of my house, um, just cause just cause of the there's just you know like so much foot traffic in here and stuff, and you know actually the song we're talking tonight has a little bit to do with you know kind of a little bit to do with <laughs> right. You that. got a new new video coming out Friday. Um, it's called Invisible Friends, right? I do, I do. I got a new, I got a new one coming out uh, Friday. A new music video is called "Invisible Friends," um, and it's off my album uh, "Intergalactic Backpacker." So nice, nice. I've heard that song, man. I've heard it a few times. It's a really good song. Um, I appreciate it, man. You mentioned Max and Mike in that. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I was, um, I, I was, uh, I was uh, embellishing a little bit on that part, man. But uh. You know, um, yeah, I do. I, I definitely mentioned Max and Mike, man. That's my for people that don't know. That's my that's my that's my dogs. But <laughs> in the song, Max and Mike are my invisible friends when I was a kid. So, oh, really? Wow, wow. Okay, I got you. How, how, um, man, I, I've heard so many of your songs, and you know, I really uh, respect the way you write songs and. and you know, what what kind of process do you use when you wrote that song? Um, how do you go about writing songs? Um, when I'm when I'm writing songs, well, every a lot of songs are different. Like when I write certain songs, I write different ways on different you know tracks. But when it when it comes to you know Invisible Prince, um, when it comes to that particular song, you know I had I had written it as an acoustic song, and I played the acoustic song out live. Mm -hmm. but as I was, you know, as I was creating that song in the studio, you know, I didn't want every song on the album to sound the same. So I kind of, you know, I, I put together this, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> four, four time and six, four time on the guitars, four, four time and like uh, on the drums and, and it, it, it matches out at a certain point in the song, but it's got this kind of, it's got this kind of, you know, you've heard this song. It's got this kind of, yeah, different feel to it. You know, so yeah. But yeah, when I was when I was writing that one, I wrote it originally as as an acoustic song, and I like the acoustic version um, more now that I've released it um, than I did when I was doing it. But I really like the studio version of it. it. It gives it a different vibe to it, and it's cool to see the different types of sounds. You know, but when I was writing that one, you know, I wrote the I wrote it as an acoustic song, and then I kind of, in the studio, I built a bunch of electric and uh, drums and bass and uh, the synth stuff. I kind of built that around it. It's interesting how, you know, you can play something acoustic, and then, you know, it sounds great. You love it, and then you take it to the studio, and it changes it, but it's still so good, you know? It's like, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy to to you know see the transformation of songs when it when you have like a just a just a basic cut of one like just a bare bones acoustic and you know acoustic and vocal song that if you if you have a great song if you have a good song acoustic and vocal you can have a great song by adding all the layers in on it gotcha on on invisible friends uh you, you got some pretty wild lines in that song uh my favorite being seeing you in the streets. <laughs> Tell me about the story of this song, man. Where did this song come from? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Um, 
Invisible Friends, uh, it, it was written, I guess, a, a while back, um, um, you know, in between my last album and this one. It, it was written, it, it was started beforehand, and then I had an event happen in my life that helped me finish the song. But, you know, the song really takes, you know, the listener through the idea of, you know, the the innocence of youth and being a child. And, you know, you know, it takes you through like the free spirited feel of being a kid, you know, um, the lyric, the lyrics in that song talks about, you know, um, we used to lay in the grass and wave at the birds as they fly past. And, and, you know, it was just, it was like this free, you know, it, it wasn't, we weren't, we weren't contained by like bills and, <laughs> Yeah. You know, um, and of course, everybody's got different stories, you know, and everybody's got hardships and stuff. But I just mean from experience I was talking from is is, you know, as an adult, we all have a lot different. You know, priorities and, and things we have to do, you know. Um, but, yeah, I I don't know if that really answers. What you were asking me there, but I, I'm gonna, I'll keep going. I'll expound on it a little bit, expand on it. You know, the first verse is really about the innocence of like youth and, you know, how you miss your invisible friends. You know, it's like the, the innocent part of your life. And then it goes into the second part where, you know, I was it's like the first line of that is, you know, back when I was 13, I quit playing outside. I wanted to grow older and older and I just wanted to drive, you know, and I, you know, the couple of years in there, I really really just wanted to drive and, you know, get out of the house and, you know, spread my wings, man, fly, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but as you're going through that time and you look back on it, I look back at it now and, you know, being the age I'm at, you look at it now and, you know, of course time's going to go the same speed for everybody, you know, but uh, you look back on it and you think things were so rough and, you know, back then, but that's actually probably some of the better moments of your life. You know, because yeah. the, the stress level is not there all the time. And, you know, and then the last verse goes into an event that happened, um, which is one reason I'm trying to get my studio out of my house. Um, you know, I had a, I had this situation where a friend had brought someone over here. And, I, you know, when they got over here, man, they got over here, man, they were like just just like super, super intoxicated and. Um, and they were like, one of the guys was one of my best friends at the time. And, you know, he was just so inebriated. It was, it was, uh, it was actually a pretty scary situation. And, um, they ended up, uh, stealing one of my guitars out of my house. Uh, mm. like, and, you know, one of them pulled out a gun and it was just, a. You know, it was just a, it was a, it was a, it was a tough moment in time, you know, was, and that guitar meant a lot to me, you know, I had sentimental well, he, value. Was he robbing you at gunpoint with the taking? Uh, he, was, he was, they were, I, I'd, I'd put it, I'd put it like this. What had set off that situation was, uh, the other guy that I didn't really know, but my, one of my best friends at the time brought him here, um, I was going to record them. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, basically what happened in that situation was, you know, they were so out of their minds, you know, he didn't particularly, he was flashing it, which is uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. And, and I went to get mine. I was, I was, like, well, hang on a second. And I went to get my gun and they kind of grabbed my guitar and ran out the front door. Oh man. I was like, I was like, hang on a second, wait right here. And I went out. They knew what I was, they knew I was going to get. And then they kind of went back and uh they they stole my guitar. Like it was at near the side of the door. And then they kind of like drove off. And everything was just so hectic and wild at the time. I didn't even really notice it until like 10 or 15 minutes after, you know, they had left and stuff. And uh, I mean, it was just and and I'm I'm over the situation now, you know, but yeah. At the time, man, it's just, you know, your, your adrenaline's pumping and you kind of feel betrayed because your friend, you know, brought somebody in there that, 
you know, you were trying to do them a favor and they were so intoxicated. I told a guy before all this happened, I told him, I said, hey, man, just just go home, man. You're going to be wasting money if you record here with me because, you know, you're not going to be able to. You're not going to lay down anything you like, you know, like, trust me, man. <laughs> Yeah. Trust me. I, I know a whole bunch of people that that can that try to record while they're intoxicated and it just never turns out good. Mm, wow. You know, yeah, I mean, as it is. Yeah, it's hard enough as is. But you know what it's like being in the studio, too, man. It's, a, it's stressful, you know. Yeah. So but uh, and then, you know, in, in that song basically ties into that situation, you know, and I, I can't wait to see in the streets was a line <laughs> that I was writing to them, you know, um, at the time. I got you. That makes sense. Yeah, uh, I've talked to I've talked to my one of my friends, the the guy that was my friend. I talked to him, um, you know, a, a couple times, and you know, he's he's really mentioned that he's sorry about the situation, and he was it was it was just scary because you know they were so drunk at the time or whatever they were on, uh, they just blacked out, man. Right. You know, and 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 people do stupid stuff when they get into that point. You know, I think everybody's well, most people have been to a point like that before and they do stupid stuff say stupid stuff you know and you just can't trust anybody at that point you know but yeah you know but that, that's where that last verse comes from but you know it is what it is it's a learning thing for me you know um that's the way i look at it. i'm trying to move my studio outside of my house so people don't have to come in here when i'm recording you know that makes sense so that's going to be interesting um you're also shooting a video on this uh are you going to are you gonna shoot a video on the street seeing them by any chance? <laughs> yeah, I probably I probably won't ever see them guys again, man. I know I won't see one of them, but uh but as far as you know, I you know, I forgive people over things, man. I'm, yeah. Yeah, when I had wrote that line, you know, I was I was just really pissed off and it was a it was a therapy thing for me, you know, which rightfully so anybody would have been mad, you know, and and there's a whole story that we can get into about that one of these days uh <laughs> but you know we had put together this elaborate plan to get it back and you know I, you know at the last minute you know my mom asked me not to do it uh and she was right you know probably wasn't worth it um and i kind of pulled out at the last minute um which is probably a good thing so gotcha, gotcha. yeah so um i've seen you shoot a lot of your videos I've even helped you shoot some of your videos. Hey, you helped me shoot. Uh, you helped me shoot. Uh, hard as hard as my drink. The one yeah, of my latest awesome. ones, man. I loved it, man. It's fun, man. <laughs> it's fun, and um, a little bit on bottom of the sea. Yep, sure and, is. Uh, some other stuff here and there, but absolutely. Um, you know how? Can you tell everybody how you do video editing? What your process is? Uh, you're kind of like a one-stop shop. <laughs> I mean, you you got your music studio, you do all the singing, you got instruments, you got the video, everything. And, you know, honestly, that's what it takes for these studios to get attention, you know, is it's, along with good music is a good video on, on out there. What's your process like? Um, yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, the first thing is I try to write the song. And then I try to do the best I can writing that song, trying to produce it. A lot of my mastering, I'll send off to uh, Jamie King for mastering um, just because he's so good at that. You know, I, I do everything in house as far as the um, recording and the writing and, you know, mixing and all that. But, uh, you know, I outsource the mastering stuff to Jamie because he's got this really expensive piece of equipment that, um, and, uh, you know, and he does such a great job. I learned a lot of my recording stuff from him. So I, I trust him with that stuff. So I just kind of outsource the mastering stuff just so everybody that comes through here, we can give them that radio quality, you know, stuff. And then, you know, as far as the video, you know, it's, you know, it's really trying to just come up with ideas so that everything doesn't look the same and, you know, different colors, you know, wearing different clothes, uh, Kind of trying to come up with different concepts, tell different stories, mm -hmm. uh, shoot different angles. Uh, the editing stuff can get kind of tedious as far as video editing, you know, especially when it's a music video. I mean, it's pop, 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 you know, it's all these things. And, you know, it's you, you want to make it professional and also like something that people 
you want to want to keep coming back and watching your content. So it's it's always a it's like staying in a mindset of trying to figure out, <laughs> you know, what yeah. a, I guess what a creator or what a content creator is, you know. Yeah, yeah I know. I've I've seen you pouring over those video editor applications <laughs> for hours, man. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I, I'll say this: I like I love that one. Um, Little bees, man. I, I can watch that over and over again, and always makes me crack up, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. I love that song, man. I love that song. Little bees, man. Y'all check it out, man. It's on Facebook. Little bees. I had to change the title of it because uh, YouTube thought I was being derogatory by saying, uh, "Well, what the real title is." So. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that was just recently they decided that. So it's little bees now. B e e s. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha, man. Wow. So, um, where can you got a new album you just put out, the Intergalactic Backpacker? Um, and you got your new single, Invisible Friends. Where can people find that? Where can they listen to it? Uh, people can people can find my new album, Intergalactic Backpacker, at Spotify, um, Pandora, uh, really all streaming services. I'm still having hiccups with iTunes, uh, for some reason. So I'm I'm still working on that. I don't know. I've been trying to get it answered by CD Baby's distributor, and I've been trying to get that um, figured out, and to no avail yet. So still trying to figure that out. So, but everywhere except there. <laughs> so, wow. Everywhere, all over, all over, all over the internet. It's literally everywhere except iTunes. So good stuff. Good stuff. You um got a lot of comics behind you there. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's my, <laughs> my, my background, man. Yeah, I was uh when I was growing up, I was a real big comic book collector, man. And and uh I wanna say I was a comic book collector, I just loved it, man. It was like my life, man. You know, it's the idea of like there's these people out there that are trying to do heroic things, and then you got these villainous people going against them. And it's kind of like life, man. So <laughs> I hear you. Everybody yeah. needs a hero and a villain, man. Right on. <laughs> what'd you, what'd you, what'd you, uh, did you, uh, what'd you get into when you were a kid? Um, I tell you, I think I liked watching, um, the Rambo movies. And, um, yeah, I love to watch Rambo, like First Blood. Um, I like watching, I was a big Sylvester Stallone fan. I like watching the Rocky the movies. And, um, I think, you know, that's probably why I joined the military when I was younger. Um, watching all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. My uh, when I was growing up, uh, I used to love watching the the Rambo movies, man. And my brother used to have uh, the Rambo action figure, man. <laughs> hey, isn't there isn't there a Rambo movie or some kind of movie? So versus Lawrence in. I remember seeing this when I was really little. They put his head in a bag, right? And when they pull him out of the bag, he's out of mouth a rat in his mouth. It was one of those where he was in Vietnam and they took him. Was that a Rambo him. movie? I don't know. I don't remember the rap. I remember leeches all over you. They pulled him out of this cesspool. Mm. And I think he, there was a bag or something they had over his head where they were shocking him. I don't know. Some crazy, <laughs> crazy Rambo, stuff. Rambo. What was his first name? Doing it, John Rambo? John Rambo, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, <laughs> man. Freaking awesome, man! You still need a Bigfoot up there behind you somewhere, man. I don't. I know, man. I got a, uh, I got a, I got a um, sign outside front of my house. It's got Bigfoot on it. It says, "Not all those that wander are lost." <laughs> Ooh, Bigfoot, man! Bigfoot's making a comeback, man. Yeah, if you can find him. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, Paul, man, it was good chatting with you, man. You too, buddy. It's awesome, man. Hope you, hope you have a good. Hope you have a good night. And uh, just let everybody know, Invisible Friends music video comes out Friday this week, and it'll be on Facebook and YouTube. And you can get my records on Spotify and everywhere, really. Um, even most of my albums are on iTunes as well. And Paul, before we go, man, before we go, um, you're actually recording a new out. Al- well, you're you're recording your debut album, actually, with me, man. Yep. Yeah. So, you, how you feeling like it's going so far, man? 
I think it's feeling, it feels, feels really good, man. Thank you, Nick. It's going really good. Um, today I felt like went really well. Um, the first one, um, uh, is out on YouTube and, um, I've been thinking all night long is coming out next. So, um, yeah. All night long, man. We put a, <laughs> put a little working on that tonight, man. Yep. Yep. So, well, and cool the other one, you know. Killing Time Sitting Here Waiting, is on YouTube. You can check that out. You put um, that out on YouTube so everybody can check that out, man. We'll put, um, I'll put that, uh, I'll put that link underneath this uh, video when it posts so people can check it out. Oh, cool. Thank you. That's awesome, man. No yeah, doubt, I'm having man. a lot of fun. Love it. No doubt, man. No doubt. Well, Paul, man, you have a good night, man. And uh, and uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you, man. Take care, brother. You too, Nick. Take care, brother. Right, good night. Bye-bye.